Hey folks, super excited to bring you another compilation video. This is where Lisa and I comb through our channel and we pick out some of the best videos that we've done on a particular topic and put them all into one video that you can click on and just have on in the background while you're doing water changes, cutting the grass, painting the fence, whatever it is that you're doing that you wanna have something on in the background. The last one of these we did was last week. We had a lot of fun with that one and hopefully you enjoyed it. But to be honest, I don't know because I'm filming this intro before that one even uploaded. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. That's where I took all of the episodes of our little soap opera series that we did way back in 2020 called Tanks of Our Lives. We put all of those together into one video. It was a whole lot of fun. I'll put a card up here for it. If you didn't get a chance to see that, you should definitely check it out. Probably not background noise. That's more of a visual series where the rest of these, they're just gonna be something to kill time in the background. That's what I hope anyway. This week is all about betas. Lisa and I have combed through our catalog and picked out some of the best videos we've done covering the topic of beta fish and we put them all into this one. And the cool thing about it is you can click on one video and you don't have to listen to a bunch of ads every 30 seconds. You don't have to constantly be going back to select the next video. It's easy. You click it and you can just have it on for what could hopefully be an hour and a half or so. I don't know, we've done a lot of beta videos. And by the way, I could have put those ads on there between every single video, but that kind of defeats the purpose if I do that. I wanted to have something that you could play for a long time and not be interrupted with stupid VPN ads and all that stuff. If you have an idea for a really cool compilation video that you'd like to see on this channel, put it down in the comments section below. Maybe that's something we could do in the future. But for today, here is our compilation of the best beta videos that we've done on this channel. Enjoy. So you're looking into setting up an aquarium for a beta and you're wondering, do betas even need decorations? Well, this video is going to answer all that for you and tell you all the different ways that you can do it, so don't go anywhere. Okay, so if you don't have much time and you just want me to get to the point of all of this and you don't want to hear what I have to say, the answer is no. Betas don't need decorations. But you should still watch this video because I'm going to come at you from every side of the argument and then you can decide what you want to do with your beta tank. But what I said is true. Betas don't have to have decorations in their tank. They can live a long and happy life in a tank with literally nothing in it. But let's talk about why even though the fish will survive, you still shouldn't do that. So here's the deal. You've probably heard that crazy husband of mine say that he likes the fish to be the decoration in the tank. He doesn't like putting a bunch of stuff in there to make the tank look pretty because he thinks it takes away from the fish and he wants all the focus to be on the fish. This is completely fine in his tank because his fish don't require hiding spots or decorations so that they can go retreat and get away from other fish. He's keeping things like Oscars, bikers, goldfish, things that really don't need any of that. And with those fish, I completely agree. These are big fish that make a huge statement on their own and don't need a bunch of fancy decorations. Plus, they just destroy it all anyway. Betas are the complete opposite side of the spectrum. They're small and they don't have the same attitude as those big pigs that John likes to keep. If you walk up to his Oscar tank, all three of them will swim right up to the front and greet you like dogs when you come home from work. It's adorable and betas will do the exact same thing. But they'll also run away and hide if something spooks them. If you spook the Oscars, they'll just be like, huh? What was that? Did you see something? So think about it. If you're a small child and you're in a room all by yourself and it's empty and there's just nothing in there, no furniture or anything, and you get spooked, what are you going to do? Go curl up in a corner? 
If there's a couch in the room, you could go hide behind that or you could hide under the bed or even go hide in the closet. But if you're a big guy and you're in that room, then you're going to be like, I know this is silly, but I hope I'm making sense. Betas are very sociable little fish, but they can also get spooked very easily. So giving them somewhere to go is critical. Give them somewhere to feel safe and calm down until things settle down. Okay, hopefully all of that made sense and I've convinced you to decorate your tank. So how are you gonna do it? Well, there's a few things to think about when deciding what to put in the tank. First is plants because the benefits they have to the health of the water and second is hides. Plants feed off of fish waste and broken down food in an aquarium, which helps the water to stay healthier for your beta. When you consider that most beta tanks don't have a lot of filtration or water movement, this is going to be very helpful. Not required, but helpful. Depending on what types of plants you choose, they can also provide those hiding places we talked about before, so you're getting a beautiful, natural looking tank with the benefits that live plants bring, plus it gives your beta hiding places. It's perfect. Next is hides. This is somewhere that your beta can retreat to if he feels scared or maybe he just wants to go somewhere and hang out. You can accomplish this with plants like we just talked about, or you can use things like driftwood, rocks, or even decorations meant to look like rocks or driftwood. It's really completely up to your imagination. There's really no rules except for one. If you're keeping a beta with long flowing fins, you're gonna wanna make sure you don't put rocks or decorations in that have sharp edges. Betas are explorers and they can get themselves caught behind a rock or a piece of driftwood and they can rip their fins on those jagged edges. So you really have to be careful with that. Also, if your beta's fins get ripped or torn, you end up having to worry about a possible case of fin rot. So it's better to prevent that than to have to treat it. Their fins can certainly heal, but you just don't want that. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that's beta sororities. This is a completely different conversation and it cancels out everything I've been talking about so far. Beta sororities are a challenge and it's not only because betas naturally want to fight, it's because we as the fish keepers need to take some extra steps to ensure it's going to be successful. If you're thinking about setting up a beta sorority, you have to understand that these fish must have places to go to get away from the other fish in the tank. These groups of girls in one tank are like a ticking time bomb. And if they don't have anywhere to go to get away from all the drama, you know how girls are. It's almost always going to end in disaster. So if you're thinking of setting up a beta sorority, just know that this tank is going to need to be heavily decorated with hiding places so it doesn't end up being a tank full of beat up beta girls. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about my favorite things that I like to decorate beta tanks with. First is plants. Plants do much more than you think and more than just decorating a tank. When you incorporate live plants into your beta tanks, you're not only putting something in there to help keep the water healthier for your fish, but you're also providing those much appreciated places to explore and hide. I like to use java fern and anubias plants in all of my beta tanks, and the reason why is simple. I suck at keeping plants. I have so much respect for these people that have amazing tanks full of all kinds of plants because for some reason it's something I haven't been able to do. I try, but I always seem to just like kill them all. Java fern and Anubias are like the easiest plants that you can keep in this hobby. For some reason, I can't even kill those. And they look really good. Now, of course you can use any plant you want, but for me, I'm going to stick to the ones that I know I can keep without killing them. Here's an idea for some plants that I can't kill. The ones that aren't alive. Artificial plants have come a long way and they've got tons of them out there that look really good and look similar to the real thing. 
The only thing I would warn you about is some fake plants can be a little sharp. If they're too sharp and rigid, they can end up snagging your betas fins. And we don't want that because we don't want damaged fins, which could lead to fin rot. Look for artificial plants that are softer and don't have the sharp edges on them. You might pay a little bit more, but at least you don't have to worry about your fish's fins getting hurt. And the biggest bonus of all, you can't kill them. Next is something I like using in my beta tanks, and that's logs. These are all man-made logs. Don't go grab a piece of firewood and put it in there. There's quite a few of these products out there that look really nice and give your beta somewhere to explore and swim through and can also be that nice hiding place for them if they get spooked. We actually carry four different kinds of logs on our website. I mean, we do specialize in betas. We have three different logs that lay on the substrate. These are very realistic looking and like I said, they give the fish something interesting to explore. And then there's these beta floating logs. This takes decorating to a whole nother level because you don't have to stick the log on the bottom and decorate around it. You just drop this little thing right in the top and it just floats around and your fish will love it. Whatever type of log decoration you choose, these are gonna be a lot of fun for the fish. They'll constantly be swimming around them, swimming through them, or even resting in them. Trust me, it's the cutest little thing when you look in your tank and you see your little fish poking his head out and he's looking at you with those eyes and he's just so adorable. Another idea that you can use that will not only make your aquarium look better, look more natural, and also provide more hiding spots for your beta is driftwood. There's a couple options when it comes to driftwood and that's to use artificial or natural. I personally prefer natural driftwood mainly because it looks a little better. The fake pieces look good, but the natural just looks better in my opinion. There's also the tannins that are released from natural driftwood. This is something I love, but John is the complete opposite. He can't stand the water looking darker at all. If you like the darker water look, you're into making your beta tank look as natural as possible and wanna give your fish cool little places to hide and explore, then driftwood is a great option. Regardless of what John says, I mean, what does he know anyway? All right, so the next few things we're gonna talk about won't provide your beta with hiding places, but it will give your take a more natural look and it'll give your beta what he or she needs. The first is mosses. Moss is another great thing to use if you wanna make your tank look super natural and you don't wanna fuss with big plants. Most mosses used in aquariums are literally a set it and forget it type thing. You just put a clump of it in the tank and watch it do its thing. You can attach moss to rocks, drape it over driftwood, or lay it on your substrate and let it just cover the substrate and do its thing. Not only does it give a great look and help with the water parameters, but it's also great for hiding things you might not want to be seen like fish waste and algae. You do need to be careful though because a small piece of moss it can go a long way and it will spread all over your tank. But the good thing is you can just clip it back and stick it in one of your other tanks and then you don't have to buy any more moss. All right, so this one is critical. And if there's anything that you get out of this video, I want it to be this one. You should get catapa leaves for your tank period. Catapa leaves do so much more for your betas than just giving the tank a natural look. They also create a natural environment that's super beneficial for your beta. Catapa leaves add tannins, lower the pH, and have been known to have antifungal and antibacterial properties. Who would have ever thought that throwing a couple leaves into a tank could have such a massive effect on the conditions of an aquarium, but all I'll tell you is this. I use these religiously, and since I started, I've had very few issues. 
You may not know this, but John and I sell betas on our website. We sell about 50 to 75 a week and have an inventory of 400 at any given time. You also may not know that I'm the one that takes care of all 400 of these fish. As you could probably imagine, this is quite a chore. For me to maintain my sanity, I need to make sure I set these tanks up with the best chances of success. I do this by using catapa leaves in my water when I mix it up to do water changes. I put leaves into the containers, which makes it look like iced tea, and then I mix the water as a concentrate to mix with my clean water. All I can say is this, I have very few problems with my fish, and I really do think this strategy has a lot to do with it. I also throw a small piece of a catapa leaf in each bag with the beta, and ever since we started this, we've had very few issues. But I totally get it if you don't like the look of these leaves, especially when they break down and they get kind of messy. So you want to use catapa leaves, but you just don't want to deal with all of the hassle? Well, that's when this product comes in handy. This is dark water from Fritz. It's the perfect product for people who don't want to deal with the actual leaves. You get all the benefits of catapa leaves without the leaves and without the mess. This is a product that every beta keeper should have. That is if you don't have catapa leaves. Trust me on this one, this has become a staple in the beta hobby. And if you want some, I will put a link in the description below and you can go get as many as you want because we always have them in stock. For the last thing on this list that we gotta talk about is something that when you see it, you're gonna just think it's the cutest thing ever. I'm talking about beta hammocks. Something new beta keepers may not be aware of is betas like to rest. We get emails quite often from people saying, my beta keeps laying down on a rock and I'm afraid he's sick. Well, there's certainly a chance he could be sick, but it's more likely that he's just resting. It can be alarming at first, so I totally get it, unless you're keeping catfish. If he's laying down, then you're probably thinking, oh God, he's dead. If you see your betas doing this, don't panic. Keep an eye on it, but also don't panic. He's probably just resting and you should probably give him something to rest on. Well, that's what these beta hammocks are for. All you do is suction cup it somewhere in your tank and the beta will eventually find it. And when they do, it's super cute and if your beta is like my beta, you'll go to grab your camera and then they're just going to swim away and you won't get the picture. It's completely natural to put the hammock up around the front of the tank because you want to be able to see your fish laying on it. That's what John did in his beta tank because he wanted to get footage of the fish laying on it. Unfortunately, this isn't the best spot for these. If your fish does lay on it, as soon as you come up to the tank, he's going to end up moving and you're definitely not going to get footage of it, that's for sure. But the best thing you can do is place it in somewhere in your aquascape somewhere, somewhere that's nice and cozy so that he can rest on it and just relax. It's not ideal for you because you can't see him, but it's ideal for the fish and that's all that matters. So that's it. Now you know what you need to know to go out and get all the best stuff for your beta. Or better yet, I'll put a link in the description below for all of the stuff that we carry on our website and you can just go order it up from us. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, let me guess, you just left a PetSmart or a Petco and you saw all of those adorable little fish in the cups and you thought to yourself, that would be so neat to put in that vase John got me last year for Valentine's Day. I mean, it's not like he's gonna get me more flowers to put in it. All right, just wait a minute. Let's talk about this first. Here are 10 things you should know about betta fish. Okay, let's get this out of the way first. I've been keeping fish since I was 19 years old, and in all that time, I have always called these fish betas. I know that there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be upset with Lisa and I for calling them betas and not bettas. 
I'm sorry. I've got a very simple little brain and I just can't reprogram it to say better. Believe me, I've tried. I have no idea what Lisa's excuse is. If you're considering buying a beta, the first thing that you need to do is get this idea out of your head that these fish are going to be happy in a small cup or a vase. Yes, these fish are very small, they're very easy to keep, and yes, they can breathe air if they need to. More on that later. But these are still living things that need to be given the best life possible. A chihuahua will fit very nicely in a 75 gallon aquarium, but does that mean that it's going to live a nice, happy lifestyle? No. Why? Because a chihuahua wants to run around and explore and poop in the dining room. Fish are no different. They want to swim around and exercise and explore. They're not going to be able to do that if you put them in a small vase or an old rum bottle. There are tons of nano aquariums out there today that are perfect for betas. A lot of these nano tanks have built-in filtration, built-in lighting. It makes them very easy to maintain and they look really cool too. Look around, they're everywhere. They're the most popular thing going right now. Just because an animal will survive in something doesn't mean that they're gonna live a long, happy, and healthy life. Do the right thing. Put a beta in an aquarium, not a vase or a cup. The recommended temperatures for keeping your betta fish is between 78 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature gets a little lower, your fish's metabolism will start to slow down. But the interesting thing is, if it goes higher than 80, the fish will still be okay because betta fish can utilize their labyrinth organ, which allows them to breathe air in oxygen depleted situations. So if temperature rises, there is gonna be a lower oxygen level in the water and they can compensate. That being said, it's not comfortable to keep them too hot. So stick with the 78 to 80 degrees and you'll be just fine. How am I supposed to talk about breeding in less than a minute? So the first thing you're gonna need is a breeding pair. This can be tricky if you're just gonna buy them from a pet store. You might as well just buy them from a breeder because it's going to make your life easier in the long run. We've already talked about how betas don't do well in tanks together because all they wanna do is fight. How are you supposed to breed them if you can't put them in a tank together? Well, this is where one of those breeder boxes or a tank divider will come in pretty handy. The breeder box or the tank divider actually comes in very handy because they'll still be able to go through that courting process without killing each other. Once they're done flirting with each other, they can be put into a breeding tank together where the male will build a bubble nest on the surface of the water. They'll go through a pretty fascinating breeding process where the female will drop her eggs. The male will pick them up and put them in the bubble nest and that's where they'll stay until they hatch. Once the breeding is done, you'll wanna remove the female, but you'll leave the male in the tank so that he can protect the eggs. Of course, there's so much more to breeding betas, and we're not able to cover it all without this video being an hour long. If you're interested in more information about breeding betas, click the I up in the corner, which will take you to a great playlist from Creative Pet Keeping. She's got 36 videos on breeding betas. Okay, so I just wanna be honest here and I wanna give you my opinion about breeding betas. I am not a fan of breeding betas. I feel like there are so many people that may breed them for the wrong intentions and I don't like that. I feel like betas are so readily available you can go to a Petco, you can go to your fish store, you can go to Walmart, and you can find betas everywhere. They're in little cups and they're just suffering. And I hate that. And I feel like unless you're in a fish club or you have hundreds of friends that are gonna take these beta, or you have a lot of tanks yourself and you can house them, I don't feel like it's right. I'd like to give you an example. If you have two cats and you decided you wanted to have kittens, would you breed these cats just so that you could have kittens? Or would you go to a shelter and adopt a kitten? 
To me, that would be the right thing to do. Now, not everybody agrees with my opinion, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, and I definitely do not mean any disrespect to people that do breed betas. I just want people to be aware. It's more than just a little fish, it's, it's a life. So if you're gonna breed beta, please be prepared to home them. Betas aren't all that picky about what you put in the tank with them, but the first thing that I wanna say about decorations is think about the size of the tank that you're putting the decorations in. If you have a three gallon aquarium and you put a giant pirate ship in there, you're not leaving very much room in the tank for the fish to swim around. I'm not preaching to you here, I, I'm, I'm just saying. Betas do well with pretty much anything you wanna put in the tank with them, from live plants to fake plants to rocks and statues. These are fragile little fish though, so try to stay away from decorations that have a lot of sharp edges and stuff like that on them. You don't wanna get their gorgeous fins all sliced up. As far as substrate goes, there really are no rules when it comes to betas. I've seen people use everything from bare bottom tanks to sand, brightly colored gravel, or even those fake rubies and crystals and stuff if you're into that. Unfortunately, there are people out there that look at betas as decorations. And if they end up dying, they just say, they don't live that long anyway. And you know what? That's not true. A well cared for beta can live anywhere from two to five years. And I've heard of some living even longer if they're taken good care of. If your beta decoration dies, it's not because they have a short lifespan. It's because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You did not do your job. There's a misconception out there that betas like dirty water because they originate from mud puddles. I'm telling you, whoever started that is just stupid. A beta aquarium should be taken care of just like any other aquarium should. You need to do your water changes and keep up with filter maintenance. Do you wanna live in a dirty house? Do you wanna live in a funky, dirty, smoky closet? No, so why does your beta want to live in a mud puddle or a dirty tank. Do your job and let your beta live to its fullest potential. Feeding your beta is the easiest thing in the world. You have so many choices. Every fish brand out there has a beta formula. Betas are carnivores, which means they like food high in protein. And there are several out there that you can choose from. The first would be live foods. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because there are a lot of other options out there. And unless you're breeding betas, then you really don't have to feed live foods. Some of the more common live foods would be things like vinegar eels and baby brine shrimp. These are live foods that you can culture yourself and they're super nutritious for your fish. But again, unless you're looking into breeding betas, you probably don't wanna mess with it. I would say the easiest way to give your beta everything that they need is to just feed them a pellet or frozen foods. Frozen foods like blood worms and brine shrimp are awesome for your beta and they'll definitely tear it up. But if you only have one beta and one cube, you're probably gonna waste a lot of that food. Right now, between John and I, we have seven betas in seven different tanks. So we just thaw out one cube and it feeds all seven betas. And then we get to pellets. Pellets are by far the easiest way to feed your fish without wasting a bunch of food. And the great thing about pellets is there's everything that you need in a pellet for your beta. My betas absolutely love fluval bug bites. I feed them four or five pellets a day and they go crazy over it. I'm not saying that because I think it's the best food out there for your fish. It's just what works for me and my fish love it. Here's the thing, doing a segment on fish that are compatible with betas can be a bit controversial. But then again, I guess doing any fish tank mate videos can ruffle some feathers out there. You're always gonna have people that are gonna say, you can't do that or it's irresponsible for you to tell people that you can put those two fish together. So let's just keep things simple and go with some guidelines for you to think about when you're selecting tank mates for your betas and I'll give you some examples of fish that we've successfully kept with them.
Keep in mind that betas are also called Siamese fighting fish or Japanese fighting fish, depending on where you look. They're called this for a reason. So understand if you put two betas together, you're asking for it. They will fight and there's no stopping them. The next thing to think about is betas typically like to stay up around the top of the tank. So bottom feeders like Corydoras and Ancestris, they're gonna be fine. The biggest thing that stands out with betas is their fins. They're absolutely gorgeous and that's what they're known for. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay away from fish that have the reputation of being fin nippers. Tiger barbs are a great example of this. They might not kill your beta, but they're gonna tear it up real good. We've kept betas with Corydoras, Guppies, Neon Tetras, Rasboras, Platys, Bristlenose Catfish, you name it. We've had a lot of different types of fish with betas. Just be careful. Do your research before you buy the fish. There's a huge misconception about beta. So they have an organ that helps them to breathe air so they don't need water movement or proper filtration. While it's true they don't absolutely have to have it, we want to do what's right for the fish, right? This video is all about what to do to make the best life possible for your beta. So if you want the best life possible for your beta, you need to put a filter on your tank. It doesn't need to be some giant filter like you have on your 55 gallon, but there's a ton of tiny filters out there on the market and they do a great job helping to keep the water crisp and creating little water movement. Not a lot of movement. Betas don't like a lot of water movement, just a little bit. The really cool thing about these tiny little filters is that they are pretty cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them and you're helping to give your beta the best life possible. Just do it. Okay, now's the time to pretend like I'm stepping up onto a soapbox. Here's the thing, folks. For the last two weeks, we've done episodes of 10 Things on fish that we believe are some of the most mistreated in this hobby. Well, this one is gonna make three weeks in a row. If you were to have a serious discussion with 100 fish keepers out there about what are the most mistreated fish in the hobby, I don't think any of those fish keepers would exclude betas from that list. Betas, goldfish, the common pleco, Oscars and clownfish for my saltwater friends out there are my top five list of the fish that I believe are the most mistreated. Let me know in the comments section what your top five list is. Maybe I'll do a 10 things episode all about that. Betas are given away in raffles. They're piled up on convention tables and left to die. There are people that even put these fish in flower vases and rum bottles to make some kind of stupid artistic statement. Yes, I said stupid artistic statement. I've even heard stories of idiots using betas as centerpieces at their wedding receptions with absolutely no regard for what they're gonna do with these fish once the reception's over. Listen, whether you call them betas or bettas, these are fish that shouldn't be treated any different than any others. They need a well-maintained aquarium and deserve to be given the best life possible. If you want one of these fish because you think they'll look cute in a little cup on your desk, just stay away from them. It, it's, it's just not right. You know, I get asked a lot about how to fix problems with betas. People's fish will get an injury or maybe they're sick and they need to know how to fix the problem. Well, there's tons of strategies on how to fix problems, but one of the things that I believe in is not letting the problem happen to begin with. I know this is easier said than done, so I decided to put together my seven keys to beta longevity so that you can prevent these problems from happening and your beta will live a long and healthy life. So let's go. Okay, so one of the things I want to talk about before we get into this video is if you want to have your beta live a long and healthy life and have this guy or girl around for a long time, then I suggest you buy the Beta Bible. This book right here is an information source that every Beta Keeper should have. It's absolutely amazing and you will love it. I just want to add that we are in no way affiliated with this author or anything like that. We just really believe in this book and I take it with me everywhere I go. 
Now, I have to start off by confessing something. We get asked all the time by customers if we know how old our betas are. For some reason, this question really bothers me because I have no way of really knowing how old our betas are. But if I'm being honest with you, it's really important to know. In fact, knowing the age of the beta when you buy it is the first thing on this list you need to know so you can have a good idea of how much life you can expect to get out of them. This is why this question bothers me so much because it's important for the customer to know this and I just can't answer it with certainty. This isn't a problem that only we have either. This is information that's going to be difficult to get no matter who you're buying from unless you're buying from the person who actually bred them. So it's a pretty long process. When we buy our betas, we're getting them from a transshipper who in turn is getting them from an exporter who is getting them from a fish farm in Thailand. So good luck trying to get an answer. We usually tell our customers these fish are anywhere from two to four months old. That's usually the age betas are when farms put them up for sale, but we really can't narrow it down any farther. Anyway, even though I'm telling you how difficult it can be to get this information, I just want you to understand how important it really is. You're not really gonna be able to see a difference in a fish that's six months old or three years old, so obviously it's important to at least try to find out how old the fish are when you're buying them. Unfortunately, pretty much any retailer you buy from is gonna have the same answer. It's sad, but we just have no way of knowing for sure. And to anyone who's asked us this question, just understand we're not mad at you or anything like that. We're more upset with ourselves for not having a definite answer for you because we know how important it is. The second key to your beta living a long, healthy life is their diet. If your fish was in the wild, he'd be mostly eating shrimp or insect larvae. So you want to give them something that's super similar. Tons of manufacturers are making specialty beta food. So this is one of the easier things on this list to keep up with. It's really not hard to find a good quality beta food, but something I want you to think about is variety. We mainly feed our betas three different staple foods. Now, I'm just gonna tell you they are all extreme products and it makes perfect sense because it's what we sell on our website. So of course we're gonna feed it to our own betas. It all starts with the extreme beta pellets and we also feed the extreme krill flakes. Sometimes the blood worms, but that's not from extreme and about once a week we feed the spirulina flakes. The beta pellets main ingredient is krill and everyone knows how good krill is. I mean, it's a main ingredient in all the brands. Obviously the main ingredient in krill flakes is also krill. Giving them the blood worms provides them with another protein source to mix things up a bit. And then the spirulina gives them that fiber to help them keep things moving and keep them from getting backed up. You don't have to feed the exact same food that we feed our fish. You don't even have to give them four different kinds of food. The key is variety. So if you're only giving them two kinds of food, maybe break it up a little bit and give them one in the morning and the other one in the evening. And listen, before you say it, yes, you're right. If you're feeding your beta a certain food that has all the ingredients in it that they need to survive on, They'll survive on it, yes, but will they be happy? I could feed John plain chicken, rice, and broccoli three meals a day for the rest of his life, and he'd survive, but he probably wouldn't be very happy. To be honest, I'm pretty sure I would see him on the news one night. Thanks, John and Lisa. I'm at the corner of 180th in May where a man has been reported, a naked, bald man, running through traffic, throwing rocks, and screaming this weird phrase, I don't want broccoli, rice, and chicken anymore. Well, I can't seem to disagree with him. What's that? Police have reported the man is still on the loose, and they will update us with further information. I'm Jay Wilson, KGT6 News. Back to you, John and Lisa.
Okay, so now's the time to really spice things up. This one's gonna get interesting. Here's the truth. Betas can literally survive in anything, whether it's a vase, a cup, or a wine glass. When breeders raise them, they do it in liquor bottles. I mean, sometimes they don't even take the sticker off. Now keep in mind, I said they can survive. Does that mean they're gonna be happy and thrive? No. When beta breeders go to the stage they call jarring, where they separate the spawn and put them all into individual tanks, the requirements they have are the fish only have enough room to be able to turn around. If they're in the water and can turn around, they'll be fine. This is the farm standards, not mine. This is obviously cruel, but unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. This is something that they've been doing since people have been keeping fish. So they can survive in those small tanks even though it's mean. Obviously, you being a good beta keeper are going to put them in something much larger than that, but I bet you'll be surprised when I tell you you can actually put betas in tanks that are too big. Yep, it's true. It's literally the opposite of what we would tell you to do with any other fish. But there is such thing as sticking a beta alone in a tank all by himself and the tank be too big. Let me give you an example. We had a customer email us recently that had purchased one of our betas and they were concerned because they had moved the fish into a larger tank all by himself and since then he had been acting really weird. He was laying around not exploring and just looked generally sad. I asked them what size tank the fish was in and they said a 29 gallon. So I said, let's try something. Can you put the fish back into the 10 gallon he was originally in? The customer said, okay, and moved him back. And guess what happened? The fish instantly perked right up and was completely normal. Now, why would this happen? Well, think about it like this. You got your fish and he's used to being in a tiny confined area. And then you put him in this big, huge tank and he's not sure what to do. He's got all this room he's not used to. So it can be a bit overwhelming. Food is harder to come by because it's spread over a huge area. There's usually much more water movement in a larger tank and he's used to just having to swim up a little to get to the surface, but now he's got to work really hard and fight the current to get up there. It's just too much. Now I'm not saying all betas are like this or your beta is gonna be this way. Some might be able to handle being in a larger tank, but for others, it's just too much for them to be in a larger tank and they'd rather be in a smaller tank. My recommendation is if you're keeping your beta alone, then a five or 10 gallon tank is perfectly acceptable. This gives him or her plenty of space without it being too much. Okay, this one might sound a little obvious, but you have to think about the beta keepers who keep these fish as living decorations. Unfortunately, this is the way a lot of people look at these fish and they feel like they're, well, dare I say, disposable. They're not spending a bunch of time like you are taking care of their beta tank, making sure the fish has the healthiest environment possible. They're just putting a little water in their vase when it gets low and throwing some flakes in there every few days. To them, it's not a pet, it's just some kind of DIY decoration that they found on Pinterest. Please understand, if I just described you, you need to completely change the way you're looking at this. This isn't a decoration, it's a pet. You went to the store and you purchased this pet, so it's now your responsibility to take care of it. You got your photos and your 12 likes to your post. Now it's time to do the right thing and take care of this fish because he didn't pick you, you picked him. <sighs> okay, let me explain why. The level of care you give to your beta is gonna have the biggest effect on the longevity of the fish. They need clean water, warmer temperatures, and a good diet. It's that simple. If you have your beta in a vase on a shelf next to your live, laugh, love pitcher, and all you're doing is pouring a cup of water in now and then, how long do you think he's really gonna last? I mean, okay. 
when you post your update picture a few months from now, do you really think people aren't going to notice and say, hey, was it that betta fish red in there? So why is he blue now? I'm willing to bet you're not going to be honest and say, uh, well, I wasn't taking very good care of him and he died. You're probably going to say something more like, well, he really didn't fit my color scheme, so I decided to take him back and get a blue one. <sighs> Your poor husband. Okay, think about this one. You get a pretty deep cut on your arm and you don't do anything about it. You just leave it alone. What do you think is gonna happen? It's going to take a while to close up and you're probably going to have a really bad scar. Most likely, it's also going to get infected and worst case scenario, you could get staph and die. Now how different is it going to be if you clean it up real good, put some Neosporin on it and cover it up with a bandage? That cut is going to heal much faster, you're probably not going to have as bad of a scar and most likely, it's not going to get infected. Well, your beta is the same way. You can leave the injury alone and he'll more than likely be fine, but if you treat him for it, he'll heal much faster and the whole process will be much less taxing on his system. Now, obviously I'm not saying that you should go out and get Neosporin or a bandage and stick that on your beta. That's, that's pretty silly. No, what I'm saying is keep your water clean, add some aquarium salt and that should have the same effect. Medications are great to have on hand and I've said it a million times. Clean water is the best medicine for your fish. Don't just ignore injuries, pamper that fish. Get him healed up and he'll thank you for it. Exercise. We know how important it is for us to be able to live a longer life, especially after the year we had in 2020. Well, exercise is just as important for betas. I know what you're thinking. Come on, I mean, they're swimming around all day. They're getting plenty of exercise. Well, that's like saying, I'm awake all day and I'm breathing. So I'm burning calories. Betas need exercise too, just like us. And believe me, it plays a vital role in their longevity. There was an experiment done at a university that put male betas in a small container with no room for exercise. And a second group was in several gallons and exercised by the students every day. Both had clean water and a good diet. The group in larger tanks lived nine years. The fish in smaller tanks lived drastically shorter lives due to being overweight and a lack of exercise. This is straight out of the beta Bible. I mean, I was shocked. Nine years. But now the question becomes, how do we exercise our betas? Well, it's easier than you think. If they have tank mates, they'll certainly help, but also using things like mirrors, like these adorable exercise mirrors we sell on our website, they hang from a floating ball, and when the beta sees himself, he thinks it's another beta. It's so cute and then he wants to show off. So he'll start flaring and swimming around like he's crazy trying to impress what he believes is another male in the tank. And the silly little fish will never figure it out. It's just so cute. But if a floating exercise mirror isn't your thing, you can also attach a mirror to the outside of the tank. Ladies, I'm sure you have some old compacts laying around. Just use one of those. It needs to be said though, you don't need to exercise your beta any more than 15 minutes a day. Any longer than that can stress your beta out. Oh, and also it works on the girls too. It's not just a guy thing. When you look at our beta room where I take care of all the betas, you might've seen all the colorful cards I have between the tanks. Well, this is why. We don't want the fish to be able to see each other all day long and get stressed out. I remove the cards for 15 to 30 minutes a day to let the fish see each other and it has the same effect as the mirrors. Does your beta have dark stripes on him that are very pronounced? Is he lethargic, not eating like he normally does? 
Well, if you answered yes, then you definitely need to react. The faster you react, the better chance you have at saving this little guy. It's unfortunate, but it's true that you can do everything right and your fish can still come down with something. It's like the stories you've heard about the guy that's the pitcher of health, eats completely clean and runs marathons all the time and dropped dead at 40 of a heart attack. You just never know. But the point is, it's great to know how to treat simple ailments in your fish before they even happen. This way, when they do, you can react right away and get him through it before it grabs a hold and doesn't let go. Believe me, I could do an entire video on how to treat illnesses and betas. Wait a minute. I already did, so I'll put a link up here for you. It's better to have this knowledge and never have to use it than to have something happen and you have absolutely no clue what to do. So there you go. Hopefully you're ready now to do what you gotta do to get the longest life possible out of your beta. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you again next time. I remember when I got my first beta like 20 years ago, the people at the pet store were like, hey, these are Siamese fighting fish. They'll kill anything you put in the tank with them. I was always scared to put anything in the tank with betas, so they would always stay in there by themselves. And it was a little boring. The truth is you can put other fish with betas, but not just any old fish will work though. So we've put a list together of our favorite tank mates for betas to help you decide for yourself what to get. Let's be honest, what fish doesn't go well with cardinal tetras? As long as it's a fish that's not large enough to fit the cardinal in its mouth, they can pretty much go with anything. This is an absolutely gorgeous little fish with the striking red and blue with the neon stripe going all the way down. They're perfect tank mates for betas because they won't do anything to hurt the beta or even pick at its fins. It's also common to see cardinals with betas because you'll usually find them in smaller tanks and cardinals are teeny tiny and can fit in almost any tank. Cardinal tetras are a schooling fish though, just like a lot of the fish you're gonna see on this list. So don't just get one. Keep them in a group of five to six to keep them super happy. I've said it on this channel many times, Harlequin Resboros are one of my all time favorite fish. They have a super cool T-bone shaped mark on their side, which makes them really easy to identify. Plus they get along with pretty much everything. They're super hardy and they get along perfectly with betas. We currently have Harlequin Rasboras in three different tanks and in all three, they're in there with betas. They're just a perfect match. This is another schooling fish that doesn't get huge, but you'll wanna have them in at least a 20 gallon tank. We've gotta make sure we say the name right when we're doing these videos because when we're off camera, Lisa and I both Call these fish Harley Quinns. Corydoras are another small member of the catfish family. They're super cool and they won't bother anyone and they won't bother your beta either. These are for the most part super active little fish that'll do a great job scavenging around looking for food, which means yes, they're another fish that'll help keep things tidy, which is always nice. Some quarries like to be in small groups though, so make sure you do your research on them before you go and pick them up. It's always cool to watch them interact as a school too. They'll be all over the bottom of the tank and doing it in a little group. It's cool to see. Quarries are kind of like snails though. Some of them get bigger than others. If you've got a smaller tank, like a 10 gallon, go with panda quarries, but you wouldn't want to put pepper quarries in a 10 gallon because they can get almost four inches in size. You see what I'm saying? Just check into them before you buy them, but the important thing that has to do with this list is they're great tank mates for betas. We all know most of the beta tanks you're gonna see out there are gonna be small, sometimes really small, like five gallons. 
One of the most common questions is what can I put in my five gallon tank to help with algae control and help keep the tank clean? Well, you obviously can't put larger plecos and stuff like that in there. So what do you do? Well, this is where snails come in. If you've never kept snails, you might be thinking, well, snails are a little boring. All right, I'll give it to you that they aren't going to provide a ton of action and movement in the tank, but they're anything but boring. Or maybe it's just me. Snails come in a ton of different varieties, and some of them are really unique, and even though they don't move very fast, they'll still provide something visually interesting in every tank. If you're looking to put a snail or two in a smaller tank, like a five gallon, look for the snails that are gonna stay smaller, like the ram's heads or the nerite snails. If you've got your beta in a larger tank and want some bigger snails, look for the mystery snails or assassin snails. Be careful though, because assassin snails will eat smaller snails like nerites. This is a good thing if you're getting overrun with them, but if you have a couple nerites and you introduce an assassin, don't be surprised if they disappear. Meow. Neon tetras are very similar to cardinal tetras. I know we've already talked about them, but these are a staple fish in the hobby and we had to include them on this list. This is another super tiny schooling fish that won't take up any room, won't create a huge bio load on the tank and won't bother your beta. This is another great fish for the beta keeper that wants to add some movement in their tank, but they only have like a five gallon, so they don't have a ton of options. You can easily throw five to six neons in a five gallon tank with your beta and they'll be perfectly fine. The cool thing we've seen in our tanks is that sometimes the betas will pal around and school with the neons. It's neat, I know it might sound kind of weird, but I think it makes the beta really happy, like they're hanging out with their friends. You can find neon tetras anywhere, and sometimes you'll even find them for like a dollar a piece. So if you've got a medium sized tank, grab a dozen or so of these little guys and watch them fly around all over the place. They're just awesome little fish. Bristlenose plecos are a fish we talk about quite a bit on this channel. They're super cool alien looking fish that'll patrol all over your tank looking for something to suck on. I didn't mean for that to sound weird. Seriously, these are really cool little catfish that have never been known to bother any other fish. They'll help to keep things tidy around your tank and it'll be no problem for your beta. The biggest thing I like to mention when it comes to plecos is these are not fish that are gonna keep your tank clean to a point where you don't need to do any maintenance. Yes, they'll pick up little things and some of them will help with algae control, but they're not gonna prevent you from needing to do your routine maintenance. Don't be lazy. Autos are everyone's dream fish. Wait a minute. They're little catfish, so how can they be a dream fish? Well, I'll tell you. Everyone's looking for a fish that can go in smaller tanks that won't hurt the other fish in the tank. They stay small and help clean algae. Well, that just described autos. See, I told you, everyone's dream fish. Autos are great little algae eating fish that do really well in groups and in tanks 10 gallons and larger. They'll help clean algae off your decorations, plants, and even the glass, and they'll do a really good job too. The only warning I'll give you about them is if you buy five or six of them and put them in a 20 gallon tank with your beta and maybe some neons or harlequins, they'll clean up the algae really quick. People automatically think if their tank is clean, it's great. The otters are doing their job, but it could be that they cleaned it all and ran out. Now they're starving. We sold autos when we had our store and we'd have people come in and say, we put them in our tank. They did a great job and then they just started dying. In a nice way, we'd say, well, did you feed them? And they'd be like, no, they eat the algae. And I'd say, yeah, you said the algae's all gone, so what are they eating now? And they'd be like, um, point is, feed your autos. 
Give them some algae wafers and they'll keep your beta tank nice and tidy. Coolie loaches are one of the most fascinating little worm fish that you'll ever see in this hobby. They stay pretty small, they're non-aggressive, and well, they look like little worms. What more really needs to be said? This is a super easy fish to keep, but there is a downside, and that is that you're gonna put them in your tank and they're gonna disappear. I'm serious, they'll be gone, and you'll be like, hey, we had one in an angel tank years ago, and I totally forgot about it. I literally hadn't seen it in years. Then we were moving into this house and taking the tanks down, I drained that tank all the way down. And when I went to take it off the rack, I saw something dark across the bottom. I was like, what the hell got into my tank? It was that coolie loach. I have no idea where he was all that time. But anyway, these are awesome little fish that you can find anywhere. Just remember, they're very shy and skittish. So you won't see them all that much, but buy a group of them and you might have a better chance. You'll have a bunch of really cool little worms swimming around your tank and they won't bother your beta. Let's say you're a brand new fish keeper and you're getting used to this whole thing and how it all works. You're still learning the ropes and you're nervous about adding more fish. Well, I've got the perfect fish for you. Go get you some platies or mollies. They're super cute, they don't get huge, and the best part is they're super hardy, so they'll be great while you're still learning all of this. They'll also be great tank mates to your beta and won't even try to mess with them. Platies and mollies don't care about being in a school either, so you can just buy one or two and they'll be perfectly happy. The only thing I would caution you on with these fish is their live bearers and they're constantly popping out new babies. If your tank is small, I'd make sure to get only females or males. That way you don't have all those babies. Platies and mollies are available in tons of different colors and patterns. They're easy to find and super cheap. So if you're a brand new fish keeper or even experienced and you wanna give your beta some company, grab a few and put them in there with him. They'll all get along just fine. Ah yes, Rummy Nose Tetras, the gift to fish keepers everywhere. I love Rummy Nose. I always have and I always will. In my opinion, they're the coolest schooling fish in the entire hobby and I can assure you, you'll never come to my fish room and not see a school of Rummy Nose in at least one tank. This is an awesome tetra that doesn't get huge and won't bother any other fish in your tank. In fact, if you put a school of them in your tank, they'll just run around together all day and never bother a soul. They have the most striking red heads and a gorgeous black and white tail that both stand out from across the room. I love these fish so much and I love them with betas. Again, the rummy nose will just do their thing, and leave everybody alone. I seriously think we should do a whole video just about rummy nose. The only problem is the list would be number 10, they're awesome. Number nine, they're super cool. Number eight, I love them. Number seven, they're the best. Number six, they're my favorite. Number five, you love your beta, right? He is your special little pet and you wanna do everything you can do to make sure he is happy and healthy. Well, we're here to help you accomplish that. Here are 10 things you can do to keep your beta fish happy. There's a misconception that betas are perfectly happy at room temperature. Plain and simple, it's not true. Betas are tropical fish who will thrive in temperatures of 80 to 82 degrees. Can they survive at 72 degrees? Sure. But will they be happy? Absolutely not. Think about it. You're used to being in a room that's 70 to 74 degrees, right? You're comfortable with that temperature and you're used to it. Think about how you would feel if it just dropped to 62 degrees. You'd be fine for a while and then you'd be like, it's chilly in here. At those temperatures, you'd start to slow down and get a little sluggish. Your immune system would drop in, you'd start getting sick all the time. 
It's true, but it wouldn't kill you. Well, fish are the same way. If their temperatures are too low, they'll be moving slow. They'll get sick all the time and generally be miserable. Sure, it won't kill them, but it's not very nice. Betas are sensitive little things, and they don't like a lot of light in their tanks. This is why you'll see a lot of beta tanks that don't even have any lights on them at all. In tanks that do have a bunch of light, a lot of times you'll see them hanging out behind decorations or even hiding. The number one cause of fish disease or death is stress, and too much light can certainly be something that stresses out your beta. When you go shopping for a light for your beta tank, look for one that has a dimming feature. They cost a little more, but it'll be a huge help. If you've already got your light and you feel like it's a little bit too bright, there's a couple things you can try. Our favorite strategy is to use plants like banana plants or swords that have large leaves. These do a really good job of allowing shade while still allowing light to come through. But the easiest way is always gonna be using a dimmable light. If you haven't purchased your light yet and you're looking for a new one, make this your number one priority. Adding tannins to an aquarium isn't exactly a new thing. People have been doing this forever, but over the last couple years, it's become really popular for a few different reasons. First is tannins will lower the pH in the water and make it more acidic for the fish that require it. Tannins are also known to help fight off bacterial infections in the fish. I don't really understand the science behind it, but it's pretty well known fact, so yeah, let's go with it. The last thing is tannins will also color the water and give it that darker look. Almost like your fish are swimming around in nature. John can't stand this look because he says it looks dirty, but I like it. This coloring of the water does two things. It makes it look natural, in my opinion, and since the water is darker, it'll deaden the light a little. Remember when John said betas don't like a lot of light? Uh-huh. It's a well-known fact that shrimp are one of the best sources of nutrition for almost all fish. More specifically, brine shrimp. Brine shrimp have been around in the hobby for as long as we've been keeping fish in glass boxes. Fish breeders use freshly hatched baby brine shrimp to feed their newborn fry that aren't big enough to fit larger foods in their mouth. And brine shrimp is an ingredient in tons of fish food out there. The reason it works so well with our fish is because they're a great source of protein, so they make your fish grow big and strong. Brine shrimp is also known for bringing out some of the best colors in your fish, not just betas, almost all fish. Not only is brine shrimp great for your fish, but they also love it. It's one of those foods that almost all fish will go crazy for. It's not the cheapest food out there though, so it's probably gonna be something you're not gonna to wanna to feed to your fish all the time. But a few times a week, give your beta some frozen brine shrimp. Call it a treat if you want. They'll love it. If you're new to betas, you might be thinking that these are fish that like to only be by themselves, but that is not true. You see them in cups at the store and the employees tell you they have to do it that way because if they're in tanks together, they'll kill each other. I mean, they're called Siamese fighting fish for a reason, right? But the truth is, betas do like tank mates, just not other betas. Unless they're females, but that's a whole other topic. Here's a 10 things video we did all about beta sororities. We've currently got betas with white cloud minnows, harlequin rasboras, bristlenose placos, and quarry cats, but there are several other options. Hmm, could there be a 10 things episode about best tank mates for betas? Maybe you should subscribe and find out. You're walking through the aisles at the pet store and you see all those cute little tanks advertised as the best home for your betas. But are they? No. Will they survive in a small one gallon tank? Well, yeah. But this video is about what will make your beta happy. 
Will your beta be happy in one of those little tanks? No, God, please, no, no! And don't believe all this nonsense you hear about betas being raised in mud puddles. Don't buy into stuff like this. Well, the fish was in a cup at the store, so he's a lot better off now than he was. Betas are no different than any other fish. If you want to make them happy, put them in at least five gallons. But just like all the other fish, bigger is always better. Live plants in a beta tank makes them happy for a couple reasons. The first is it gives them something to swim through, which keeps things interesting and gives them something to do instead of just swimming back and forth all the time. And the second reason is all the natural benefits that live plants add. Plants help to absorb nitrates in your beta tank, so not only does it give them something to play with, but it'll help keep the water healthier for them too. It's a win-win. The tank will look prettier, the water will be healthier, and your beta will feel safe and cozy. When you think about betas, what's the first thing you think of? Half of you probably answered beautiful colors while the other half thought about the incredible flowing fins they're so well known for. Some betas have some absolutely amazing, long and sometimes even fluffy fins. They're almost like little pieces of art. Something that a lot of people don't think about is things that are in your tank that could possibly damage those fins. Let's face it, the fish can't really control those long fins, so it's real easy for them to swim through something really fast and rip those fins to shreds if you're not careful with the type of decorations you put in there with them. When you're buying decorations or picking out the perfect rocks, look for sharp edges and things sticking out that could possibly grab onto those fins whenever the beta swims by. Trust me, it feels pretty bad to have your fish all ripped up and knowing it's your fault. Look for smooth decorations or rocks. It's that simple. Hi, I'm Joanna with Primetime Aquatics, and I'm here to talk about something very exciting. Water flow. Actually, water flow is very important when you have a betta. Why? Well, betta are not strong swimmers. They have long, beautiful fins. They come from calm waters. And where do you buy them? Well, you buy them when they're in a little cup. Depending on how long they've been in that little cup, they probably haven't gotten much exercise lately. So if you take the betta from a little tiny cup that has no water flow, and put them in a tank with like heavy water flow, that's not gonna be good at all. What if you put a betta in a tank with heavy flow? What happens? Well, the betta will become fatigued, could become stressed, and sometimes they will start avoiding going to the top of the tank. That's not good because as you may or may not know, a betta takes oxygen from not only the water, but the, uh, also the air. So what do we do? Well, the first thing is with hang on back filters, you can just adjust the flow. That's an easy fix, usually. The second way is, I would say almost all of our tanks that hold bettas, we have the, the it's like the all-in-one nano tank, and it has a very high flow coming out of that return. What we need to do is put a little piece of sponge and we, we kind of partially cover it, kind of baffles the, the water and it, it slows it down. That helps out a lot. The last thing that you can do is you can have really tall plants or tall decorations and it kind of blocks the water and kind of slows down the flow. Now remember, you don't want to completely kill the flow. You just want to slow it down so it's nice and calm. So remember, calm waters equals a happy betta. So good luck and enjoy one of the coolest fish in the hobby. But then, I'm kind of biased. This one is kind of like this segment on plants. The thing is, some people don't want to mess with plants because they think of it as more work. If that's you, I understand. I love live plants, but I get it. They're not for everyone. 
No matter what you're decorating your tank with, think of hiding places. Giving your beta a place to hide doesn't have to be somewhere where you won't see them. You can create little caves or a space under a piece of driftwood. This is going to give your fish somewhere to retreat to if he or she is spooked or feels scared for whatever reason. Just remember, no sharp edges. Let's keep your beta in one piece. If you're someone that takes care of your betas by giving them the right size tank, providing them with a varied diet, and keeping their water clean, then you're doing everything that you possibly can to prevent diseases. But if you have a beta that has come down with ick or maybe an internal parasite or even some kind of a fungus infection, then you're gonna wanna stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you exactly how to treat it. If you're someone that's followed this channel for a while, then you have heard me say before that it's easier to prevent a disease than it is to treat it. If you're doing preventative maintenance, then you won't need to go any farther. If you're keeping your fish in a proper size tank and you're keeping them with proper tank mates, if you're using the right kind of filtration and you're doing your water changes, then you're doing everything you possibly can to keep your beta happy. You also wanna make sure that you have proper decorations for your beta. The last thing you wanna do is put something in there that might tear his or her fins. You don't wanna cause injury to your beta because you put the wrong kind of decoration in. Let's keep it simple, silk plants or even a live plant which is probably the best for your beta. And last but not least, it's so important to have a varied diet for your beta. They need to have high protein foods, but it's also good to have something along the lines of spirulina. I say that because I've found that it really does help with keeping your beta's digestive system healthy. So varied diet, super important. I know there's a ton of diseases and illnesses that I'm not even gonna talk about today, but I do wanna make sure that we focus more on the common diseases and illnesses. Let's start with ick. This is a parasite that is pretty common in a lot of fish, not just beta. So this could pretty much help everybody. This is a parasite that spends part of its life cycle living on the skin of the fish and feeding off the tissue but healthy fish are typically immune to the infection. Just remember that this parasite will manifest when changes happen in the aquarium, like poor water conditions or extreme temperature changes. This will weaken your beta's immune system and make them more susceptible to infection. How do you treat these white spots on your fish? What I would suggest is quarantine them in a tank by themselves. Keep the lights off to prevent stress and do 50% water changes every other day. Increase your temperature and add aquarium salt. In more severe cases, I would use a med like Fix-It by Fritz or even Super It Cure by API, but make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Preventative measures would have been to quarantine your fish first, add aquarium salt, and catapa leaves but we'll talk about those and the benefits of catapa leaves later. Let's move on to fungal infections. Does your beta have white cottony patches on his body and fins? Then he most likely has fungus. This is contagious to other fish, so it's important to catch it quickly and take care of it before it spreads throughout your tank. Let's just say that your beta is in a tank by himself and you just need to treat him and nobody else. You're gonna wanna do 100% water change and use a med like Marison by Fritz or Fungus Cure by API. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's directions and keep up with your water changes. Preventative measures would have been to add aquarium salt to your beta's water and catapa leaves. Another fungal infection is fin rot. This is when the edges of your beta's fins look jagged or eaten away. The best treatment would be 100% water changes and to use a medication 
for fungus like uh, Marison. I know, I've already mentioned it before, but it might be something you wanna keep on hand. Make sure to do your regular water changes every other day until you start to see the regrowth of the fins. Adding catapa leaves will help with the repairs as well since they have chemicals with antibiotic properties. So we're going to talk about internal parasites and they really suck. If you're vigilant of your beta's behavior and obsess over how he or she's doing, then you'll notice if your beta is losing weight or acting lethargic. This could be a sign of internal parasites and it's very contagious to other fish. It's not always easy to know if you have an internal parasite. You might think your beta is just sick. You might not realize there's a parasite in there and it's eating away at the inside of your beta. I would start with 100% water change and aquarium salt. Repeat your water changes every other day and if you don't see improvement in a few days, then try an antibiotic like Marison 2. If you start to suspect that it is an internal parasite and the antibiotics aren't working, then you're gonna wanna move on to treat internal parasites with something like Paracleanse by Fritz. Pulmonaris, Popeye, and Dropsy are all common bacterial infections that are caused primarily by poor water conditions. Pulmonaris? Did I even say that? Did I say it right? Pulmonaris? You know what? I say Playco too, so who cares? <laughs> the fact is your fish is more susceptible to infections when their immune system is compromised by dirty water and stress. Believe it or not, stress can be caused by something just as simple as a temperature fluctuation. You might be wondering what Culminaris looks like. Maybe you've never experienced it before, so you're like, what even is it? Culminaris looks like whiter grayish white spots on the head and around the fins and gills. Popeye is pretty easy to identify. You're gonna notice that your beta has either one or both eyes protruding from his socket. To treat, do 100% water changes and add aquarium salt. Severe cases should be treated with antibiotics like Marison by Fritz. Dropsy is when your beta stomach is bloated and his scales are raised. And in severe cases, he might even look like a pine cone. Dropsy is usually fatal and very hard to treat. So preventative maintenance is key to making sure that your beta doesn't get dropsy to begin with. Swim bladder is usually caused by overfeeding. This is why I always stress to add spirulina to your beta's diet. Spirulina should not be the staple food for your beta, but it's good to feed it, in my opinion, once every other day, once every three days. This will help keep your beta's digestive system moving smoothly. And we could all use a little bit of that. A varied diet is the key to keeping your beta healthy and also preventing so many of these illnesses and diseases that I've talked about. It's also very important to make sure you keep your temperature at the right level. You want to keep it 78 to 80 because having it lower will cause your beta's digestive system to slow down and we don't want that. If you notice that your beta is having a hard time swimming, it may be caused by a swim bladder. If the swim bladder is increased, the beta will most likely float to the surface and not be able to swim down to the bottom of the tank. When the swim bladder decreases, the beta will struggle to swim upwards and will rest at the bottom of the tank. Treatment for swim bladder is as easy as just fasting your beta for a day or two. You may even want to lower the water in your aquarium so that your beta is not trying to fight his way up to the top. This will make it easier and less stressful for your beta while he is getting better. The best prevention for swim bladder is a varied diet, keeping your water clean and keeping that temperature up to 78 to 80. I hope I was able to help you out with some of the more common diseases and illnesses that your beta may get in the future. I hope you also understand that preventing these diseases is the key to a healthy beta. 
If you keep up with your water changes, if you have a varied diet for your beta and you keep your temperature up to 78 to 80, your beta is gonna live for a very long time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Believe it or not, stress can be com <laughs> Believe it or not, stress can be uh, Okay. Believe it or not, stress can be caused. The fact is your beta is going to be no. The fact is The fact is your fish years ago they try to Years ago they try to Put me in a... Oh, this is live. If you're doing research before setting up your first beta tank, then you've come to the right place because we're gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. Before we get started, let's just address the elephant in the room. We say beta, you may say beta. Let's just get past that. We're gonna go over everything you need to know to get your beta tank up and running and provide the healthiest and best environment for your new pet. A lot of people believe it's perfectly acceptable to just throw a beta in any old tank and they'll be fine. We're gonna show you in this video why that's wrong and show you the right way to do it. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to betas is that the males are not the only ones that make good pets. Yes, the males are the ones with the beautiful flowing fins, but there are some absolutely jaw-dropping female betas out there too. I gotta be honest, I've become absolutely obsessed with female betas, so maybe I'm a little biased. Everything we talk about in this video applies to males and females. I just wanna make sure that you don't ignore the females because they're pretty awesome too. When it comes to selecting the right aquarium for your beta, I'm gonna give you the best advice that you're gonna get in this entire video, and that's just go and get your fish a five gallon aquarium. Yes, I know there's tons of different tanks out there that are advertised as beta tanks that are two and three gallons. I'm not saying you're a bad person if you get one of those. I'm just saying if you want the best possible tank, look for at least five gallons. Well, I guess the best possible tank would be like a thousand gallons. But anyway, the point is give your new beta as much space as possible. You can get one of those starter kits. Just make sure that it's at least five gallons. Trust me, in the end, you'll be so glad you did. And so will your fish. Yes, your beta needs a heater. Betas are tropical fish that want their water to be at tropical temperature, which is 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 26 degrees Celsius. I realize some of you might live in a tropical climate, and you might not need a heater, but most of our audience, about 65%, are from the US, Canada, and the UK. So, the good thing about heating your beta tank is most of you are gonna set up smaller tanks, and there's quite a few preset heaters on the market made specifically for small nano tanks. These are heaters that are automatically calibrated to maintain a temperature of 78 degrees. It's perfect because you don't have to make any adjustments. All you have to do is stick it in your tank, plug it in, and you're done. Of course, we'll put links to everything we've talked about in the description. When you see betas in the store, a lot of times you're gonna see them in those stupid little cups. And this is what leads people to believe that betas can survive in just about anything. And then there's the whole, they were raised in mud puddles thing. Listen, I don't wanna be all preachy here, but betas are no different than any other fish. They need plenty of room to swim around and they need filtration on their tank to keep the water healthy and clean. You don't have to spend big money on some fancy filter. A simple sponge filter will work or a small hang on the back filter. These can usually be bought for just a few dollars and they'll do a great job. I'm a big fan of these small internal filters from Aquion. We have them in two beta tanks and they've both done a great job. They're super easy to maintain and don't take up all that much room in the tank. 
Another option would be a small hang on the back filter like this. They cost a few more dollars, but what I love about them most is a lot of them have flow control, which is perfect for betas. One of the big things about these fish is that they don't like a ton of water flow in the aquarium. So when you go to select your power filter, make sure that it has flow control so you can turn it down and you're not blowing your fish all over the place. Lighting your beta tank is not a complicated thing, but there is a couple of things to think about. First is betas don't like a ton of light, so you don't want to waste a bunch of money on the biggest, brightest light out there. Next is if you do have a bright light on the tank, look into getting some plants, real or fake, that have large leaves. This gives the beta somewhere to go to get some shade and avoid the bright light. The next question is, how long do you need to keep the light on? Well, there's really no rules about this when it comes to betas. They don't really care either way, but if you have live plants in there with them, you'll definitely need to give them plenty of light so they can grow. If your beta tank is in a room that has a lot of natural light, you really don't need to put your light on hardly ever unless you have live plants in there. Just turn it on a couple hours when you're home at night and you want to spend time with your fish. But again, unless you have live plants in there, then you got to follow all of the rules about growing live plants. But no live plants, room with plenty of light, just turn it on a couple hours a night. Decorating your beta tank is the fun part. You can go so many places with it and do so many different things, but there are some rules that apply. First is betas like to have places they can retreat to and hide to feel safe. They also like to be able to go to these areas to rest, so make sure when you add decorations, you think about this. You can use things like pieces of driftwood, rocks or even little mushroom houses for them to go into. You'll see them going in and out of these spots all day long and it's super adorable. Next thing to talk about is plants. Some people will tell you you have to have live plants for your beta to be happy. Well, it's not true. I mean, it's nice and they do love it, but if you don't have the patience to use live plants, there's tons of super nice artificial plants that work very well. The thing is, try to stick with the silk plants. They look better, they look more natural, and they're much safer for your betas. Where the plasticky ones, well, they could rip up the fins on your beta and, well, that's not good. Feeding your beta is super easy because there's so many different foods out there by different companies that make the food specifically for them. With so many different foods out there, you'll never have a hard time finding food for your fish. And the good thing is, I've never really known betas to be really picky eaters. They'll generally accept whatever you offer them, but of course, we definitely have our favorites. Two of our favorites are from Extreme, and our personal favorite is the crowflake. I swear this is one of the best foods on the market for any fish. We feed it to every community tank we have, and if our cichlids and arowanas weren't so big, we'd feed it to them too. The problem with giving it to those big fish is we'd have to put so much in there just for them to get enough. Cause they're pigs and they eat a lot. Anyway, the second extreme product we love is their brand new beta pellet. Our betas absolutely love it, and you gotta admit that little teeny tiny spoon that comes in every can is not only adorable, but it also makes it super easy to make sure you're giving your fish the right amount. Now this isn't just a commercial for Extreme. We are fans of the API Beta Flakes, the Hikari Pellets, and tons of others. The thing is, if the fish love it, we love it. Cause the bottom line is, the best fish food out there is the food the fish will eat. Tank mates for betas is something we've spent a ton of time on in the past. In fact, we did a 10 things episode all about it where we give you 10 different ideas for fish you can keep with your betas. I'll put a card right here that'll take you to that video and give you a whole lot of ideas of fish that you can keep with them and go into a whole lot more detail about it. But for the purposes of this video, there are a few things that you really do need to think about when it comes to selecting tank mates for your betas. First is you want to consider the fact that most people are going to keep betas in smaller tanks, which means there won't be much room for any other fish. If tank mates are really important to you, you might want to think about starting with something a little larger like a 10 gallon. 
There'll be plenty of room for smaller fish and it won't be any more difficult to take care of than something smaller. The next thing to think about is one of the best characteristics of betas is their amazing fins. Some of them are really long and fluffy. You'll definitely want to stay away from fish that are labeled as fin nippers. But definitely watch our 10 things beta tank mates video that we did a while back. It'll give you some really good ideas. Betas are popular for a lot of reasons. They're beautiful fish, they're easy to take care of, and they have the most amazing personalities. You definitely don't want to be one of those people that believes they don't require any work. You've still got to do your job to give them the best life possible. Regular water changes and filter maintenance are required with betas just like any other fish. Get on a routine of doing maybe 50% water changes every other weekend and change the filter cartridge once a month. Other than that, it'll just be easy stuff like wiping the algae off of the glass and cleaning the glass on the outside to make sure your tank looks its best. Are you obsessed over betas like I am? If so, have you ever wanted to put a bunch of them in one tank together? If you answered yes to either one of those questions, then you're going to want to stay tuned so that you can hear the 10 things you need to know on exactly how to do that. Here are 10 things you need to know about starting a beta sorority. First things first, what is a beta sorority? A beta sorority is exactly what you tuned into this video to see. It's an aquarium full of betas. But the catch is, well, it's all females. Don't worry because betas aren't like a lot of the fish in the hobby. The female betas are actually gorgeous fish too. Yes, they're different from the males. They don't have those flowing, dramatic fins like the males do, but they're beautiful fish. Just look at them. They're amazing. One of the biggest things you need to watch out for is making sure you're buying a female. Sometimes those males, they can trick you. And when they're young, they look very similar. Believe me when I say this, it's happened to me. Make sure you're buying your betas from someone you trust. And it's a good thing to do some research and make sure you know the difference between your males and your females. Again, sometimes the males can still trick you. <laughs> Finding a surprise male isn't the end of the world, but in some cases it could be, so just don't risk it. There's a misconception out there that female betas are sweethearts and they can just go in a tank all together and they'll automatically get along. It's true they're not as mean as males, but female betas can be a little nasty sometimes and you want to make sure that you give them a good sized tank so that they have enough room to swim around in and they can get away from each other if they need to. Just think about it. A real sorority house? with all females, most of them have their own rooms or maybe they just share a room with somebody, but yeah, they have their own space and there's a reason why females like to have their own space. They can be a little bit. <coughs> if you put five or six of these fish in a five gallon tank, you may have some problems. I would recommend a 20 gallon aquarium that way they have more room to swim around and get away from each other if they need to. Worst case scenario, a 10 gallon. But honestly, if you're new and you're not that experienced in keeping a beta sorority, I would stick with a 20 gallon. If you're putting a bunch of fish in there, you want as much water as you can get. So it makes the fish happier, it's easier for the fish, and it's easier for you. It's a win-win. Setting up and decorating a tank for a beta sorority is no different than setting up a tank for one beta. Except you want a bigger tank and you want more plants or fake plants or hiding spots. You just want more. More betas means more decorations. 
One of the things we want to control in a beta sorority is aggression. So giving them plenty of places to hide is a great way to do it. Betas want a place they can go to and call their own and feel safe. So make sure you include a bunch of small areas for the fish to go to. This can be live plants or fake ones, rocks, driftwood, or even the little castles or treasure chests. Look at it this way. You're providing your fish with somewhere to be comfortable and at the same time, you can create something beautiful. Check out aquascaping videos from George Farmer and Aqua Pros. Trust me, you'll be inspired. Betas are most comfortable in a pH of neutral, which is seven. You'll also wanna put a heater in the tank and keep the temperature up around 78 degrees. Warmer temperatures are generally better for your fish's overall health, keeps their metabolism up, and it helps them to fight off diseases. When it comes to feeding betas, there's a lot of different options out there, but for this video, I'm gonna give you what works best for me. I'm not a big fan of beta pellets. Even though they're small, I just don't think they're small enough for betas. They might seem small enough to you, but if you really pay attention to when your beta is trying to eat that pellet, it's almost like us trying to shove an apple in our mouth. It's not easy. Yep, I look forward to seeing comments about that one. Anyways, I like to feed my betas things like bug bites, frozen foods, and a good flake. My staple food for my betas are the bug bites. The pellets are so small, it's nothing like the big old beta bite pellets. They're teeny tiny, they have everything they need in them, and you know what? It's so, so important, and I can't stress enough that betas need a varied diet. So give them some frozen food, give them some flakes, mix it up a bit, and keep your betas healthy. We talked earlier about giving your betas plenty of hiding spots to help prevent aggression. Another way to do that is adding other fish to the tank. Adding tape mates helps provide some distraction and it helps to create chaos, which can deter the attention. Basically, it helps them to not constantly be thinking about beating each other up. It causes a great distraction. We've had success in keeping Pearl and Zebra Danios, Romino's Tetra, and Harlequin Rasboras. But I know there's more out there that they can be with, but these are the ones that have worked for me. Rule of thumb is the look for community fish, the ones that are peaceful and non-aggressive. Okay, so I know I said I kept betas with two different kinds of danios, and they're a little crazy, so I'm just gonna give you a little advice here. If you get danios, try to get a small number of them. I know they like to school, so just do a minimum of five or six. That's worked better for me than having like 15 or 20. When I had 15 or 20 danios with my betas, they completely took over. They caused so much chaos and they were crazy, crazy fish. So you want to be able to see your betas. The whole point of having a beta sorority is that they're the star of the show. So if you decide to put those danios in there, keep them at that bare minimum of five or six. When it comes to how many female betas to get, I've heard every number imaginable. I've had numbers between five and 30 and they've been fine. But this is why I suggested a 20 gallon tank because in my opinion, to have the best success for a beta sorority, you should have a minimum of five females. Five betas in anything smaller than a 20 gallon is a little risky. Can it be done in a 10 gallon? Sure, but it's so much easier to keep the water clean and clear if you have a bigger tank. Also, the fish will thank you. They'll be happier. But anyway, five or more females in a tank, that's what I suggest. This is something that I think is really important and not talked about enough. Betas are naturally aggressive. And in a beta sorority, 
we're trying to always keep the piece. One of the ways to do this is by keeping them all around the same size. I know this can be tricky because when you go to the pet store, there's usually one female to every 10 males. But just keep it in mind because this is one of the best pieces of advice that I'm gonna give you in this video. Naturally, if one of the fish are larger, they're most likely gonna be the bully in the tank and they're gonna end up beating up all of the smaller fish. This isn't automatic, but trust me, you're gonna have a much better chance of having a successful tank if you try to start them all off at about the same size. So here's the thing. The best case scenario when you're setting up a beta sorority is to get your betas all around the same size and the same age, just like we talked about before. I know this isn't the easiest thing to do because it's not like there's tons of females for sale at the pet store, but this is why some real planning needs to be involved before you buy any fish. The whole point to this video is to help you to be successful when starting a beta sorority. And the best way to do that is getting them small and raising them up together. When betas are babies, they're not really looking to fight. It's not until they get older that they start to develop an attitude and that's when they can get a little nasty. If you raise them up together and they're always around each other, they're most likely not going to want to fight and they're not going to be as nasty. It's not a guarantee, but believe me, it helps. Another piece of advice, if you have a successful beta sorority and you see this beautiful female and you wanna add her, I wouldn't do it mainly because there's that one single female getting put into a tank full of females that are already established and you're risking the chance of her getting beat up. So don't do it. <laughs> Start them small, let them grow up together, and they should be fine. This is no doubt one of the most important things on the list, and if you stuck around long enough, you'll be glad you did. Your chances of success are much better than the people that checked out early on this video. When you're entering the world of a beta sorority, you're entering the world of the unknown. Things could go perfectly smooth for you or they can unfortunately go bad. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to be honest. If you have one aquarium and you throw 10 females in there and things break bad, what are you gonna do? Are you ready? You need to ask yourself that before you buy a single fish. Trust me, you should always, always, always have a backup plan. You need to know exactly what you're gonna do if things break bad. Damn right. This could mean having multiple small tanks or one larger tank with tank dividers. Setting up your backup plan should be done while you're setting up your tank. You may not know this, but I am a perfect example of this with this tank. When I first set it up, we had a huge problem almost immediately that could have ended in disaster, but it didn't. Why? Because I had a backup plan. If you want to know more about that and what I did to get through it, then you'll want to check out the video that I'm putting up on Tuesday. If you're watching this after the follow-up video goes up, I'll put a card up. You'll just click that. 